Kia ora, good evening. Police are asking South and Otago firearm owners to exercise additional care and safety in securing their firearms following a sp recent spate of thefts in Southland. In the past few weeks, there have been a number of incidents in Southland where firearms have been stolen from properties. In one case, 15 rifles and shotguns were stolen from an Invercargill address late last month. Police are also investigating the theft of seven shotguns and another firearm on a farm at Taramoa earlier in August. A hunting rifle was also taken from a vehicle near Totapuri on the 17th of August. Police say that while in most of these cases the firearms were securely stored, it's a timely reminder to firearm owners of the importance of safely storing firearms. Police are also asking firearm owners to ensure that they keep a record of the serial numbers and details of firearms they own, including the type and model. Speaker of the House of Representatives David Carter is lending a low-profile campaigning hand to first-time national candidates around the country. Today it was Sarah Dowie's turn. Mr Carter visited the Burt Munro exhibit earlier this morning before a lunchtime address on his role as Speaker of the House. Well I'm in a unique position in that uh, I've spent the last two years establishing myself as apolitical so I don't want to get too involved in the hurly-burly of election campaigning but I've said to the party I'm happy to spend any time with some of our newer candidates right around New Zealand and therefore I'm here today with Sarah Dowry as she campaigning for the first time for the Invercargill seat. And the fact that you are here though, um, she, there is a comfortable majority here, but uh, the fact that you are here means that um, nothing's for certain. Oh, nothing is for certain and uh, I feel I can assist the newer candidates. I've been in Parliament for 20 years, so I'm here to, to do what I can in a relatively low-key way, but certainly take every opportunity also of talking about the role of Speaker, because a lot of people actually don't understand the full implications of my position as Speaker of the House of Representatives. What are some of those implications? So you maintain a neutral uh, stance throughout the uh, electoral process as, as and now? Well, as I say, I've spent a lot of time trying to establish myself and a respect from the opposition parties that I'm there to chair Parliament in an apolitical way. But besides chairing Parliament, I'm also effectively the Minister for Parliamentary Services. I'm the Minister for the Office of the Clerk. Those roles carry on and they carry on now until Parliament assembles after the election and elects a new Speaker. I'd like to talk to you, if I could, about Eric Roy, the retiring MP here in Invercargill. He was Assistant and then Deputy Speaker. Um, how did he perform? How, how was he in the House? He, he was a tremendous adjudicator. He had the respect of all the parliamentarians. And it's not an easy position for a Speaker or a Deputy Speaker to move into, in that you are a member of a caucus prior to that. You've then got to come into this role of establishing yourself and gaining the respect of the opposition that you are prepared to adjudicate in a fair way. Eric Roy did that superbly as, a, as Deputy Speaker. He, he will be missed, do you think? Oh, certainly. He was a character. He was a great MP for Invercargill. Uh, he's now at a stage where he says he's done his bit and I accept that. He wanted to retire, he deserves to retire and he leaves a good legacy behind him. Before we let you go, I have to ask, were you tuned into Kim.com's big announcement last night? I watched a little bit of it, uh, but I was watching television between, say, 7 and 7.30. I quickly got fairly bored with it. I don't think there was much of an announcement. And as we move around to Macargo today, that's what most people are saying. So that's the feedback, is that perhaps um, nothing was revealed and that was all hype? He, he had hyped it up to be a, a great revelation. Nothing came out last night. I think the sad thing for me watching it is that there looks as if there's been quite a manipulation of the political uh, process, the campaigning. Uh, people have now have a chance to judge that particular man and his involvement in New Zealand politics between now and Election Day. Meanwhile, it was back to old school campaigning today for Labour's Leslie Soper as she and her soapbox delivered party policy in the street. Soper's soapbox meetings have been happening all over the city. Hunter Andrews caught up with the candidate in South Invercargill. In the last few days we've been doing a lot of street corner meetings and we've had people say, you know, it's great to see that the Labour candidate is doing this. We remember you know, hearing about street corner meetings in the past and so forth and it's good to see you out actually meeting people face to face, having the conversations, letting people ask the questions and so forth. So it makes it more personal. You know, if every tweet you do 
is sort of limited to 140 characters and you're thinking about you know, what can you fit in that space, you get to a street corner meeting and people do like to have the conversations and ask the questions. I was just actually speaking to someone in your, your audience who was saying that she's not online and feels like she's missing out on some things. That's what I think is, is something a lot of people, especially older people, but some younger people have said the same. Cost of living sometimes means younger people who would love to be, you know, have all the gadgets don't. So we have had that comment a lot. And that's one thing about electronic voting, which I'm a big supporter of. But you could never have electronic voting as the only option because you would cut so many people out. So I'm a big supporter of it being an option for future elections. You haven't been overwhelmed with queries regarding kin.com last night. No one's asking you about spying and things. Is it a topic at all? I expected that, and we did have an earlier rally in Invercargill, of course, around the GCSB, and a lot of people really concerned about that whole spying stuff. Hasn't come up at the street corner meetings today, or might come up later today or tomorrow. I think people are thinking very hard about what was revealed last night, and the what seems to be high credibility for the people doing the revealing. If voters didn't get an easy vote pack in the mail last week, they're being urged to check their enrolment now as they may not be enrolled. National Manager of Enrolment Services Murray Wicks says that to vote in this weekend's general election, you must enrol now. He says if an easy vote pack did not arrive in the post last week, voters should check and enrol now. Enrolment, enrolment closes this Friday, the day before the election day. If you're not enrolled yet, do it now, says Mr Wicks. It's the only way to make sure your voice is heard and your vote counted on election day. To get an enrolment form you can free text your name and address to 3676, go to www.elections.org.nz, visit any post shop or call 0800 36 76 56. Stay with us. After the break, KiwiSave is missing out on money for nothing, plus a Te Tai Tonga candidate is hopes for a large southern hemp industry. Welcome back. Smoke alarms and a few behavioural changes will go a long way towards reducing fire callouts, along with regular cleaning of chimneys and flues, according to the Invercargill Fire Service. From June to August, there were 61 structural fires in Southland, 31 of those for Invercargill alone, with some common reasons. One is disposal of ashes. People are still tending to put hot ashes into a plastic container, not a metal container, and for whatever reason they end up against the wooden wall of a house and we end up with a uh, large property fire out of it. Uh, this is quite common, believe it or not, so, so sadly that happens, so people need to change a wee bit more behaviour, let the ashes cool down for at least three days, put them, have them in a good metal container and then transfer them to wheelie bins or wherever they are checking that they are cold. But that's it's a major cause. Uh, electrical is another cause for us, the meter heater rule. Again, another behavioural change. Um, they're putting the heaters too close to combustibles. If they're not using heaters, uh, recent fatalities have been caused by candles. Uh, sadly, those have been in caravans and outbuildings, more so than main houses. Um, here again, we have alcohol involved, so more behavioural changes we need, need to look at. So we have alcohol, uh, temporary accommodation, or out of the main household no smoke alarms, and uh, it's just a recipe for disaster in a lot of cases. So, And uh, in, the, in our province, we've had three fatalities, in, uh, well, that's bordering Otago, but three fatalities recently, so we don't want that to continue. People who um, put smoke alarms in and perhaps don't check the batteries or put a long life battery in, in the hopes that it'll keep them going yes. for a few years. Yes, yes they do. And um, long life are, are working well. You do, They do claim 10 years exactly. We don't. We, we say they're long life because you can never, never, never tell. So, but we will come and check them for them. We will uh, actually change batteries for anyone that asks us if they haven't got family or relatives that can help. So we, that's one of our processes. Every day we're out doing batteries and installing smoke alarms. We've had huge campaigns. Uh, it's been a success in our, in our fire stats. The severity of the fires are going down but due to behaviour, people's behaviour, they're still staying at a certain level and uh, we'd like to bring that down a bit further. So we want families protecting families and looking after each other. If you've got children, put smoke alarms in their bedrooms, protect them. We have 
faulty electric blanket, fires, we have candles get knocked over. So protect your family. More KiwiSavers were paid out for member tax credits last financial year, but many more are missing out on free money, according to ANZ Investments. In the 2014 financial year, 56% of KiwiSavers saved enough to reach the criteria to receive the member tax credit. That's a 6% improvement on the year before. However, nationally, KiwiSaver members missed out on an estimated $400 million that could have been claimed if all KiwiSavers contributed the minimum amount. Kiwi savers get 50 cents free for every dollar contributed up to $1,042 annually. However, if they pay anything less than the $20 per week, they're not eligible to the $521 member tax credit. In the city to cast her vote today was Te Tai Tonga Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party candidate Emma Jane Kingi. Ms Kingi says she's out to encourage young Māori to vote and is actively promoting the virtues of medicinal use of cannabis and the potential for a large hemp-based industry in Southland. Everybody thinks that medicinal cannabis is about people going and buying um, cannabis. Well, um, a lot of research in Colorado is um, proving you know, the only thing that will work for these children. Um, and I think this is an, an emergency in this country. We really need to support these families here and reduce all seizures. Cannabis really can save lives. You've got a bigger interest also in the uh, hemp industry, if you like. What are, you, what are your thoughts uh, potentially for an industry here in South? Um, I'm currently personally going through a, um, an application process to um, investors for establishing an, an industrial hemp plant here in Southland to manufacture um, hempcrete products which could help with the Christchurch rebuild, um, also hemp insulation. Um, my goal is to grow enough hemp here in Southland and throughout the um, all Māori land throughout uh, New Zealand, um, generate an income for all Māori landowners and also um, create a New Zealand made product uh, insulation product uh, which could insulate every home in the South Island. So it also has um, it has many um, benefits. Hemp superfoods um, are rich in omegas 3, 6 and 9. Um, we could, uh, the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party would propose um, when we uh, have um, regulations. Uh, currently at the moment Australia and New Zealand are the only two countries in the world that um, you aren't able to use um, hemp seed food, um, which only was banned last year. Venture Southland, uh, Environment Southland possibly, and Venture Southland um, research that the top crop to be grown here in, in Southland is in fact hemp. Um, this is complementary to dairy. Uh, it has, it, it's carbon neutral. It's, uh, you know, I, I personally am going to create jobs here in Southland. Um, I hope that Naitahu or other iwi will jump on board and we can utilise Māori land that is currently un unavailable in uh, the North Island and even here in Southland. And that's it from us. Next on Sport, a wrap on the All Blacks' close win on Saturday night against South Africa. From the news team, good night.